You in there? Where you at? You in there? You in there? Oh. Hi. This is the officially unofficial geek podcast. Moving the camera around a little bit there. The officially unofficial geek podcast, and I am your host. This is the YouTube version. YouTube. I'm your host, Carrie, 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 Carrie Quinn. <laughs> I think my cat is back there making noise. <sighs> so here we are again. This time we're going to talk about three. Three, 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 three comics, and it's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <sighs> Anyways, awkwardness aside, hi, how's it going? So, here I am again, I'm doing the third video in a row. Um, trying to catch up on everything. So, um, what I have to talk about, well, okay, besides, uh, comics, got that to talk about. Hmm. Hmm. Profile's weird. Anyways. Um, so... I'm going to talk to you about some comics that I read recently. I'm trying to think of something to, to... Oh, don't spoil Godzilla vs. Kong. I haven't watched it yet. I think I'm watching it soon. And then, you know, I'll probably talk about it. Either here or on my TikTok. Okay, what else have I, I watched recently that's worth noting? Um, so Disney Plus has 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 uh, uh, added to their Star Wars extravaganza some uh, like retro um, stuff. Uh, there they haven't added the droids cartoon yet, but I believe that they are going to be doing that. They have added the Ewoks cartoon. Um, the two uh, made-for-TV Ewoks movies, of which I have never seen before. Well, I, I can't say that realistically anymore, because on Friday I did watch um, Caravan of Courage. Cheesy, 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 but... I love the Ewoks. The Ewoks are fucking adorable and can't really go wrong with the Ewoks. Um, it is also something that came out like, what, 1984, 1985, something like that. Um, it was also a made-for-TV movie, but, you know, when you, when you factor in all that, uh, eh, it's okay. It was okay. I really like the Ewoks, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I will be watching the second one. Um, I I know, I know, I know I'll be watching the second one. Um, but apparently it's grittier, from what I hear, uh, than the first one. Especially within those first uh, few minutes I've heard. Um, don't spoil it for me. Actually, technically it's been kind of spoiled already a little bit. But I'm still going to watch it. Still going to watch it. And I've watched a bit of the Ewoks cartoon, never in order. Um, it's always been catching parts here and there. Um, the same thing this weekend, you know. Um, it's been one of those things where it's like I, I'm I'm coming in on it like mid episode or whatever. But another thing that is also up on Disney Plus, um, the is the the cartoon from the holiday special. Uh, the old holiday special. I personally think they should put the whole goddamn holiday special on, but that's just me. Maybe they're waiting for Life Day. Mm. Anyways, so, yes, um, 
I also watched the most recent episode of The Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, not gonna spoil it. We won't talk about it. I I am enjoying that show though. I it's not it's not me not wanting to talk about it because I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Um, but you know, different people have different timelines in their life, just like comics. Um, and that kind of thing have different timelines different universes everyone's got their own timeline their own universe and so maybe they haven't caught it yet so we're gonna we're gonna keep that a little bit more tightly under wraps for people but coming up i'm sure i'm gonna be watching that second ewoks movie i'm sure i am going to be watching uh, godzilla versus king kong i am surely gonna keep up with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and other stuff that's coming up that I'm really excited about. Have you seen, have you seen the Suicide Squad trailers yet? Yeah. I am excited as fuck to watch those films. I saw, or watch that film, excuse me, it's one film. Um, I saw the preview for uh, the, the red, ba I saw the red band trailer, um, obviously, because that's one that posted first and I was definitely into it. And then I watched some other stuff about the making of it that exists on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you'd be able to find it. Um, and then the, uh, regular theatrical trailer came out recently. I did watch that as well. And I'm still, still into it. Still ready. Still can't wait. I, I do like a lot of uh, Mr. Gunn's work, um, especially with the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and I think it's pretty cool. Congratulations to actor Sean Gunn, who is now not only in the Marvel Universe, but also in the DC Universe. Been watching him since Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... I'm a geek of many things. <laughs> Gilmore Girls happens to be one of them. So um, that's a little bit of, a little bit to, to share with you about what I'm watching now and what I'm and what I'm looking forward to and what um, I have not watched yet. Um, so, anywho, on to the comics. Okay, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do you guys a solid in this in this uh, video because I'm going to be discussing three um, different DC comics because I've been mostly into DC. Um, I did recently read a reprint of an X-Men comic that maybe I'll take a moment and do a video on um, that I recently got my hands on. It's really cool. It's not an original. It's a reprint. Um, there's this one shop then I go to uh, every once in a while that has like this rack of, of, of dollar comics and it's mostly reprints of old stories um, and this particular X-Men story um, was from 1981, originally published in 1981. Um, just to give you a little bit of idea, it was the Rogue, um, Rogue Joins the X-Men issue where she comes to Xavier for help and uh yeah I mean, if you don't know that Rogue is was a part of the X-Men then I can help you with the whole fucking spoiler thing sorry it happened in 1981 catch up anywho <laughs> um uh savage as always I try to be so uh, I'm going to do you guys a solid with these three, and I'm going to give you my personal recommendation um, in the order you should read these, because um, there's tie-ins uh, ever so significantly, well, it's not even just like really hidden, it's like there. Um, But it's, it's really cool. I'm going to do you guys a solid. Because as a storyteller, as a writer myself, I got to do that for you. 
Um, it's me, me doing you a solid. So I'm going to tell you right now, the first issue that we're going to talk about is also the first issue, um, of these three that I think you should pay attention to first and read. Um, I am really digging this, this series. I'm going to be keeping up with that in regular issues. Um, because I think it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be giving you those extra insights into other stories that you don't normally get in the regular issues. Um, I had to check on what my cats were doing at that moment, but okay. It's going to be one of these things, um, that is going to give you insights into other facets of stories and give you little tidbits here and there. Just kind of, um, <sighs> compliment to compliment what you're reading elsewhere um and that is uh batman urban legends number one um it's a little bit of a thicker book um let me pull it out of my bag and board here um it's a little bit of a thicker book um different than than usual um and here's the back cover got an alfred pennyworth quote there it does tie into the story so um but it says uh he idolized you master bruce and you let him down we let him down so that is talking about I just put a box over there and my cat has decided he's going to jump into it. And I'm not wearing my glasses right now um, because there's a glare with the with the camera here on my laptop. So I I can only just see like like this like in the door, like next to the to the door of my apartment. I can just see this like gray, gray um, furry type thing um, hopping in the box that I put over there next to the door to be taken out to the trash. Uh, you know cats. <clears throat> if you know cats, you know that they love boxes. So I think he is over there sitting in the box and kind of tearing apart part of the side because that's kitties for you. But anyways, I digress. Batman Urban Legends number one of the Infinite Frontier. This is number one of, not only number one, of, excuse me, of Batman Urban Legends, but it's also number one in the order that I'm going to tell you guys about today. This is because we have, um, we have stories, we have different stories, um, um, within the Batman, uh, mythos, um, and Okay, so we've got stories that involve the Outsiders, um, Grifter, Red Hood, and more importantly, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. This is what you need to read first. Um, it's really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. Like I said, it's going to be something I'm going to keep up with because I, I view it as something that's going to be able to give you insight. Not only into the Batman, you know, Batman, Batman story. Um but also insight into other titles and we're 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 gonna get into that we're gonna get into that um some of the stories are absolutely heart like there's there's stories in here that are absolutely heartbreaking um and but exciting to read and great to read the red hood story uh in particular um it gave me a new appreciation for that character that I did not have before. Um, so I want to see where, possibly where that character goes in the whole scheme of things. Um, I'm really interested to see that. So um, that's one of the stories that really grabbed me. Um, the other story that really grabbed me um, was... The Harley and Poison Ivy story. And I understand that I am very Harley heavy right now. Because um, she's one of my faves. But. I 
it's this heartbreaking story and you have to read it. It's kind of like the whole idea of like, it's not unrequited love because She was in, and it's, it's told through the perspective of Harley. It's not unrequited love because she was actually with Poison Ivy. But, um, it's just like that whole like loss and regret and wanting to make it right kind of thing. And Harley is definitely like contemplating that right now in this story. And it's very heartbreaking to read. And I don't think I've given too much away because you, you really should read it. It's, 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 it's great. It's wonderful. And it is number one out of these three that you should read. You should read this Batman urban legends first because of the other ones that I am going to speak of today. Very excited to speak of. This is the next one. <clears throat> Very excited to speak of. Catwoman. Number 29. 29, 29, 29, 29. See our girl in black there. <laughs> um, Trouble in Little Tokyo. Catwoman number 29, Infinite Frontier. And, um, this is second, obviously, I'm telling you, that's why I'm telling you about it next, is it's second, second in the order. Um, <clears throat> great story. Um, Catwoman, Selena Kyle, as always, has an excellent wit to her. Um... <sighs> There's, there's, there's moments where you're just like, it, it's kind of humorous and it kind of breaks the, the, the monotony. There's a, um, there's somebody going after people for a reason. Um, and you're going to also, uh, the other reason why Batman Urban Legends is a big deal to read first out of these three, um, is because the story involving, um, Red Hood also, Red Hood, the Red Hood story and the Harley story kind of tie in to Catwoman um, in, in different ways. And where do I put this? And it kind of ties in in different ways. And um, that becomes way more apparent once you read it. Um, why? But there's this new drug out there. Um, and I have my own video points and my own thoughts on exactly what's going on. And if I were to tell you that, that would be spoilerish. And so I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to tell you is, is these two definitely tie together. These two definitely tie together with the other one I'm going to be telling you about today in this video. And they're all going to tie together and, and in possibly really interesting ways. Um, so in the Red Hood story in Batman Urban Legends, um, he's kind of chasing this whole new drug that's on the streets. And um, then there's stuff going on in Catwoman involving this thing involving this new illegal drug that people are taking. And she's looking into it as well. Um, and she's, she's, she's on the case in her own little way. She's been approached by, by detectives and, and asked questions and, and that kind of thing. That's what's kind of near the beginning of the issue. And she's like, you know what, if anyone's going to look into this, it's going to be me. And I'm not going to do it with your help. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it with anyone's help. I'm going to just, you know, figure it out myself. Because I want to know what's going on. 
Um, and you figure out a lot by the end of that issue. And it's the tie in between um, what's happening in, in the Batman universe and Batman 106, what happened in the Batman universe in Infinite Frontier Zero, everything is starting to go and tie in. Okay, even I uh, in my last video, I was talking about Joker 1, it's tying in there as well. Everything is cohesively tying in together. But specifically, the most interesting things that I think that are happening in the storyline are happening with the storyline of Harley. Um, and we'll get to her in a moment. Um, Catwoman's storyline and this whole urban legend ones because it has the stuff with, with Red Hood. And um, it all is tying in with the whole Batman universe, Batman 106, um, which I've talked about in a previous video. Um, everything going on there. It's all tying in together in a neat little package. And um, a lot of stuff gets revealed um, that are like, ooh, and uh, not a lot of stuff. Like a number of things get revealed and, and get hinted at um, in Catwoman number 29. Um, and that's why I paired um, the three together in this video that I did. Um, it wasn't just because I wanted to talk about Batman, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn. Like I said, I'll get to her. In one video with Red Hood, um, it's because I think that some of the most interesting stuff involving this story is happening between those three titles. So that brings us to the third um, issue that I'm talking about uh, in this video. And that's going to be Harley Quinn number one. Now, I, I have two copies of this. I'm going to show them both to you. Um, the reason I have two copies. This is the regular um, to standard issue. Um, Harley Quinn number one. Really awesome. Um, and I got to tell you, like, okay, so the reason I have two issues, two copies of this, is because they're two different covers. And normally, I don't really care about the covers all that much. Um, it's about the story for me. But, you know, sometimes, I, I mean, I like to pick different covers. Now, where I picked up Harley, because I did not want to wait on this one, I thought that this one was going to be one of those ones um, that people were really going to go out and get. Um, <clears throat> especially, you know, considering, I was considering that. And so, um, I went on my, my whirlwind, um, over lunch hour collection of, um, a couple comics from my nearby storm. Um, and I picked up what they had available and they had this one available. Um, but there was another store, uh, that had, uh, some variants available. And, uh, you know, normally I would look at it and be like, whoops, luck of the draw. <laughs> I don't need to get second copy, regardless of what it looks like. Typically, that's how I've been lately. Um, but so like I found out from a lot of, I, I found out from other people, particularly um, my older brother, who's into comic books as well, told me that he couldn't find Harley Quinn anywhere. He couldn't find Harley Quinn number one um, where he was looking. <clears throat> and when I saw this other issue, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab it. And then um, if he still can't find it, I'm going to send him a copy. But contacted him. He was like, well, my shop's going to get me another copy. So I don't need, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So I'm like, Okay, cool. I'm good with this one then. Okay, so just so you know, this is one of the variant covers, obviously, and I really loved it because I looked. I thought it looked kind of um, anime-ish, um, 
because of like the 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 artwork involving especially with harley's face and everything like that yeah it's very um kind of kind of anime like and i thought that was kind of cool um and you got you know you got harley you got her with her baseball bat you got like broken glass involving the joker involving involving punchline here um and just so you know, Big Brother, if you watch this, you would have gotten the regular one. You wouldn't have gotten this one. But anywho, so Harley is trying to, um, trying her best to be on the, on the, on the straight and narrow path. You know, um, she interacts in this issue with Batman. She interacts with other people, other characters. Um, one of the really cool things that, like, that I I can say about this issue, and and I say that you should read it. Obviously, the third one out of these three. Read it third. <clears throat> um, because you're like, if you're like me, you're gonna start like, like you know hypothesizing on exactly where this is going to be going from here um especially for her um she <laughs> one of the really the really cool things about this about this issue is is she's kind of treating <laughs> she's kind of treating it seems like it's, without actually coming out and saying it she's kind of treating um her decided path in life at this point she's treating it like um she's kind of in a 12-step program <laughs> kind of kind of um so and at this it, um she has interactions with 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 a number of characters one in particular is batman batman does come to visit her and everyone's like you know Batman, Batman, Batman likes Harley to a point. You can tell that he does like Harley. Um, but you can also tell that he's also kind of annoyed at times, um, with her, with her personality and the way she approaches things and how she talks about things and, and what she does. So he's very much like, okay, we do like that you want to help, but uh, try to try to help in our way and it's uh, that's never going to happen you're never going to get harley quinn to try to help in your way you're going to get harley quinn to help in her way mm -hmm. but um <clears throat> she does have an interaction uh with batman in her apartment where um she she has this she has this board of, of pictures and notes and everything like that of different, of different people. And it's basically, it's everybody that she's, that she's harmed or, or, or done, done dirty during her life of crime. And it's her amends wall. <laughs> she's keeping track of, of all the amends she has to make with people. And that actually kind of ties into like, if you're watching the Falcon and Winter Soldier, there's like something that, that, um, is a part of that show. That's also like one of these things where it's like somebody is trying to make amends for, for past actions. Um, but the thing is, is like, you have two different approaches. You have the, you have the, the character in the Falcon and Winter Soldier that's doing it. And then you have Harley Quinn, um, and they're two different approaches to the whole process of making amends. Um, which is really, I, I mean, you can imagine if if you you have any experience reading Harley Quinn, um, or watching the cartoon or, or anything like that, that Harley has her own uh, interesting viewpoint on how to to operate, and um, there's there's a tie in, obviously there's a tie in with Harley. Uh, because you do have a Harley Quinn story in that Urban Legends. But their thing is, is like, they all three tie in so wonderfully together. That's why, like I said, that I decided to talk about them all together in one in one video. Um, 
but like I like I said, I it it really my my personal viewpoint on how you should read it is you read Batman Urban Legends one, Catwoman twenty nine, <laughs> and then Harley Quinn one. And then you're gonna sit there and be like, oh gosh, I gotta read all these fucking comics over and over again. There goes the money. Isn't that how that is? Okay, well, um, that is my video here involving um, those three comics. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, again, to kind of show you um, what we got here, we got yeah, Harley Quinn here. Um, Harley Quinn 1, we were just talking about. And um, here's this cover, uh, Catwoman number 29. And we've got uh, Batman, Urban Legends number one. And um, yeah, so th that's that's it for these. Um, obviously, I, I have a few more to <clears throat> set the hiccups in front of you guys. That's weird. Um, I have a few more that I'm going to be uh, putting together videos for. Um, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, in that grouping, we've got some, some Superman stuff. Um, we got Nightwing, uh, which was a fantastic issue, uh, recently from the, the Infinite Frontier storyline. Fantastic, fantastic issue. Um, fantastic. It was really good. I, I did really enjoy that. Um, we have the Action Comics, um, which is basically... Tying in with the Superman line. Um, got a few others uh, to, to talk about. And so, <clears throat> obviously I'll be back. And uh, when I talk about... I've got um, actually some <clears throat> in videos coming up. I got a couple um, actual book books um, to talk about. Uh, so that will be coming soon, hopefully. Um, but as always, listen to the podcast, listen to the podcast. Um, recently, my most recent episode, um, of the podcast, I am diving into my, uh, 39 year old reaction to, uh, different things that I enjoyed in my youth. Um, for this, uh, it's going to be a series, a uh, small little series. Um, for this first, uh, episode, we are diving into the X-Men animated series, that is now streaming on Disney Plus. Uh, for the other item that I'm talking about in this most recent episode, is um, I reread Neil Gaiman's Death: The High Cost of Living. Uh, big deal for me. Um, so that's in the the most recent episode of the podcast. Uh, I'm going to be doing another episode soon. It's going to involve um, <clears throat> a rewatch of a lot of episodes of My So Called Life. And a couple other things. So, um, check out the podcast. It's available on Google um, Podcasts, um, uh, Anchor. Um, oh, um, yeah, it's on Spotify. Spotify. A lot of people listen to stuff via Spotify. Um, should be able to listen to it there. No problem. And... Um, I have obviously this channel, um, please subscribe, um, like the video, all that jazz, uh, comment, uh, tell me what you thought of, of some of these comics. If you read them, um, I'm always interested in hearing about what other people think of these. Um, I have a TikTok, <clears throat> uh, follow me on TikTok at, at officially unofficial geek. Find us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and <clears throat> stay safe, take care of each other, wear a mask, social distance, get a vaccine plan. Work on it at least. I'm working on mine. Um, uh, take care of each other. Find something to geek out on, whether it be books comics, TV shows, movies, whatever, um, and enjoy, enjoy life. We only have one. 
YOLO! Uh, I'm, I'm never doing that again. I'm never gonna do that again. I promise. I promise. Okay, so this has been uh, Carrie Quinn for the Officially Unofficial Geek Podcast YouTube edition. And I'll be seeing you guys. Bye!